I am absolutely super excited to finally have this conversation. Uh, I, I love your description of yourself as a recovering quantum physicist and data scientist. Absolutely adore that. I wish I had something nearly as clever uh, on, on any of my socials. Uh, but um, I do find it amazing how small the world is, how small this community is in terms of how our connection happened. And I, I, I will drop a name. I am super grateful to our mutual friend, Christine Silva. Uh, she might be one of the she's she's one of my circle of friends that actually listens to the podcast. So I, I, I wanted to make sure I dropped her name. Uh, and but I but I also I should be more thankful to my four year old son and her four year old son for becoming friends, which then obviously led to uh, uh, eventually through a series of events uh, of getting us here. But Amir, welcome. I, I've been like I said, I've been really, really dying to have this conversation. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk as well. Yeah, for sure. And with that, I would love to to get a full sense of of your path. Uh, I, I always love this question. I start with this question every single time because it's always, regardless of it being the exact same question, it is a very different answer each time. And it's and I and also I imagine it's not a very linear path to uh, to where you are today. Like from education and and your, and all of your experience to to uh, your your current role, I'd love to love to learn a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, I'm originally from Iran. Uh, I grew up there until I was 25 in my undergrad and uh, master's there in physics. Uh, I got really <clears throat> excited about quantum physics. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the funny anecdote about me was that I wasn't one of these kids that were, you know, completely taken away by physics and always dreamed about physics, etc. I came to physics very accidentally. I really oh. fell in love with it, uh, especially when I got to the quantum, you know, physics <laughs> part. Um, so I ended up doing my master's in that area, and oh. you know, sort of uh, that was sort of the jumping point for me to come to Canada because I came here to do my PhD uh, in that area, and you know, quantum computing was becoming a thing uh, at that point. So I, I did my PhD in that area. So the assumption always was, you know, that I'm chasing an academic career, so mm -hmm. I did the next linear step, as you put it, uh, and, and did a postdoc, so went to England. Uh, I worked at one of the top quantum computing labs in the world at the University of Oxford, and sort of didn't love it at that point anymore, because, you know... Oh, I that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I still was really in love with you know, the research itself, but sure. the prospect of what I could do with that as a career uh, uh -huh. was not very attractive. You know, the whole, uh, you know, the, the fact that you have to always chase money, you have to teach, all of these admin side of things were not very attractive. And also right. uncertainty of the future, like, you know, where would you live, what kind of job you would get in academia, et cetera, right? So Absolutely. there are many factors. Right, that that sort of pushed me away from that path, and sort of like I was tired of moving around. I thought I was, but I'm still moving around apparently. Uh, uh, but yeah, moving around for you isn't to another city; it's across an ocean potentially. You, right. you, you yeah, wow, that yeah, that. So I'm, I'm moving around on my terms now. Like before, I would have been moving around because there is a opening in, in you know the second tier university in God knows where, right? Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, so I came back to Canada and uh, sort of went through this identity crisis of who am I, what am I doing, and ended up deciding that I'm a problem solver. It doesn't matter if it is quantum or something. Mm. So, ended up working at uh, Royal Bank uh, as a data yep. scientist. That's where I met Christina. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed data science work for a good three months. Then I, was, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then I was bored. It was partly, you know, the corporate environment, partly um, just the fact that data, like the, the the idealistic picture of what I imagined data science was, was hmm. not. So, um, so that was very quickly disillusioned. Uh, so I, I again, wow. like a huge identity crisis. 
that, you know, what am I, what am I doing? I thought, you know, moving on to the senior levels will be better. So, you know, I took a senior role in RBC. Um, eventually didn't love that either. Interesting. Uh, but I found my love in product development, sort of like when I started, you know, thinking about, okay, what kind of products can be built here, right? That That's where I really felt excited. And that led into, you know, building the community I did and then the company, right. you know, Right, right. Well, perfect, perfect segue. Uh, I can imagine not not your first podcast, and you you seem to know what you're doing in terms of our line of questioning. I appreciate the hell out of that. But but having having said that, tying exactly into uh, aggregate uh, intellect and 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 the communities you built, walk, walk us through how that's a it's a hell of a story. Yeah, definitely. So in in one of the identity crises that I had. <laughs> When I was working in the corporate, uh, I went I went to one of the executives in a bank. Like I, whenever I get to you know this phase of crisis, I usually go to people that I respect their careers and say, "This is what I'm dealing with. I think mm-hmm. you're a person in your career. How did you navigate these kind of things?" I love uh, that. And one of the best advices that I got was, "Look, like you could move to a more of a managerial role, but the reality is that you might." lose your technical touch, which means yeah. that you become relevant very quickly. So, mm. um, so his advice was focus on, you know, managerial work nine to five, but keep yourself technical outside of that. Um, and that was like literally the, the seed for how the community started, because literally that week I contacted a bunch of people and said, do you want to get, get together after work and read scientific papers about machine learning? And currently, <laughs> tens of people were interested. Very soon, hundreds of people were interested. Very soon, you know, that community got to a few thousand people. All of a sudden, right. they had a YouTube channel, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the, yeah. the, the project was fairly organic and, you know, really predicated on me seeking knowledge and seeking, you know, what is next in my career? What do I need to learn? How can I activate all of these things that I'm learning and right. turn them into real things? I, I love the strategic move on keeping, you know, building out that managerial skill set, but not losing the technical aspect. I think I've, I've, I've known a few folks that have, you're, you're making me realize that, that have fallen victim to losing that technical piece, or they stay very much on the technical side, which is fine. Uh, but I imagine also then there's competition with young folks coming up uh, uh, that are, might be a, uh, a little bit more in tune with some of the new technologies and you might be on par despite your, you know, your decades of experience. So that's a really interesting way to navigate both uh, and 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 have the best of both worlds. That that's an interesting piece of advice. I might, I'm definitely going to steal that for a, a, anyone that comes to me with a with a similar issue. I I I, I do love that. Um, but then wonderfully, in terms of uh, uh, the, the company right now and and the the platform that that get get you built uh you know walk walk us through tell tell the audience for those that may not be familiar with uh what it is that you're currently working on and and some of the magic i think that you that you've been able to accomplish definitely so um as somebody who is trained in academia for probably two decades uh, and then started working in industry uh for you know the past six or seven years uh, in very technical areas, I'm very accustomed to having to read technical documents. <laughs> but the reality is like scientific papers, documentation of, you know, coding frameworks, et cetera. Right. So, but the reality is I absolutely hate that activity. And sure. I always, you know, like that's in my opinion, a very, very inefficient way of achieving the goals that I had. Like, it being research in quantum computing, being building products in industry later. It's just, in my opinion, largely a waste of time. Like it, it does help me get a bigger picture if I have enough time to go through the process. But well, sometimes I want to just quickly get something done. I sometimes want to just activate the knowledge that exists I have or I, uh, people around me have to do something. So uh, the, the core of the idea came up when I was sort of transitioning from academia to industry. And I came across natural language processing and I was right. like immediately like the very, very first idea that came to mind was 
wait, can I get machines to read these papers and tell me more? <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I, I usually would hire uh, interns uh, for that purpose. It's not nearly as efficient as what you. What you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so that's sort of what the core of the idea was. Uh, and we've done many iterations, but you know the the vision, the mission has still remained the same. Like we want to create a system that is capable of understanding technical documents and providing the answers you're looking for when you're designing a practical system. Uh, so you know, initially we thought that this is sort of an educational thing. Like we thought that okay, people need this in the context of education. But after many many experiments and several years of learning. Yeah we came to the conclusion that what is missing is a tool for thinking. What is missing mm. is a tool that guides you as you think through things that you internally know, people around you know, and exist in the documents that you have. So today, uh, today the way I like to describe what we're building is as a knowledge navigator. It is, it is not a typical knowledge management tool where you just write notes. It's not your typical slide where you go ask people if they happen to exist around you or if they happen to know your answer. Um, it's a combination of all of the above. It's a, it's an intelligent agent using, you know, language models. You might have heard of chat GPT these days. Uh, so right. something very similar to that, that essentially answers technical questions, but, you know, unlike chat GPT that uh, the struggles with factuality, you know, we are creating a lot of guardrails around what we are doing to make sure the answers that you get are factual, but also targeted towards uh, a system that you're designing rather than just a completely open-ended uh, conversation. So in that sense, it's a navigator in a sense that you're starting from somewhere, you're aiming to go somewhere else. This navigator is guiding you how you can get there using all the knowledge that is available to you. Yeah, that, that's outstanding. I just, I love the concept, obviously. I've as I uh, will try to learn a little bit more about it, the, the, the description of it being, what if you could centralize your knowledge and let AI organize it for you? That really st that really struck out. I am drowning and by no means am I uh, in remotely as technical as, as yourself or your, or your colleagues, but even so someone such as myself, I'm, I'm drowning in, in documentation, I'm drowning in processes. If I'm onboarding, I'm coming to a new organization or coming onto a new project and it is very technical, uh, I don't necessarily know where to start. I have lots of questions. Uh, I, I find myself working on legal documents and by no means am I a lawyer and I'm, we're redlining and you're going back and forth. But if you could be able to have that information collected, organized, and then also be able to 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 ask those questions without me having to wait on my, you know, my the PhDs at, at, at Fuse or my, my lawyers or whatever it is, just the speed at which you could just get right down to it. You described it as such to be able to, Listen, I just want to work. I just want to get to where I need to get to. I understand that I have to conceal all of this, but the idea that someone can, or, you know, a tool can do that for you and then just accelerate the process is, is outstanding. I, 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 I'm absolutely blown away. Um, and I can imagine, I, I, I understand the growth. I understand the demand. Uh, it's always really cool when someone works with the community and, and builds with a community and serves the community and you're part of that community. So you're not building something that doesn't make sense to them. You're, you're part of them. You know what your issues are and you're able to build something accordingly. Like that's, that's a really exciting stuff. I imagine the feedback that you got has been well, obviously given, given the growth of, uh, of the company has been, has been outstanding. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about uh, um, how, what's, what's changed and how you've grown in the last, last uh, few years. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the uh, I usually say our community has been a very crucial part of our journey. I don't think I would have been here today talking to you about, you know, what we're building if it wasn't. <laughs> there has been, you know, obviously in a startup, there are days that are super hard, days that you're like, you know, what am I doing with my life? But you know, then you think about the energy <laughs> yeah. that the community is bringing, you know, the, the impact that you're having on their lives, not only through the tool we're building, but, you know, through the network and connections that are meaningful yeah. and helping them grow. So, you know, obviously, as you can imagine, the problem we are working in is an extremely complex problem because it combines yes. very, very, uh, you know, nuanced, human cognitive ability, which is thinking, and 
social behavior, right? Because it like collaborative knowledge work is a combination of all of them. So it, it is, it's been very important for us to, you know, be, be really close to this community, observe how they learn, how they do work, how they, uh, you know, leverage knowledge that is available to them. So, you know, really it started with, you know, myself convincing a few core people in the community around me that is exciting right. to explore. And over time, you know, things have been, you know, getting more and more formalized, you know, today, uh, you know, my team is, you know, my co-founder who's on the business development side of things. We have a very talented product owner who is, you know, running with our product. He's doing mm -hmm. so many experiments with the community members every week. Uh, we have a product designer that is making everything pretty and usable. Uh, <laughs> we have a few people at University of McGill and Metropolitan University who are essentially our R&D team. They're doing a lot of very interesting research for us. We have three full-time developers who are building the platform. So it's a team that is growing. It's a team that has really come together and, uh, you know, we, we all share that vision that, you know, knowledge should be accessible and usable by people who need it and want uh, to to build impactful things. So it really helps us get over a lot of challenges that we have faced uh, and, you know, helps us keep forward. Right. I, I can understand that. I mean, I've, I've worked at a number of firms in which, you know, you're, employ you're an employee and, uh, you know, whether you're, you're, you connect with your colleagues doesn't really matter. I'm part of the team. I'm a soldier and I'll get done when I need to get done. And, and now I really appreciate genuinely caring about the individuals I work with, uh, working well with them, understanding the best ways to interact and, and, and that, that feels like a luxury and, and, and one that I, I, I try not to take for granted. Um, and I imagine that that also for you is, is, is the same case. And I imagine that also makes things pretty easy, but it could not have all been rainbows and sunshine uh, from the from the start. There had to have been some challenges that you faced over over the time with with as as you continue to build and work with the community. Tell us about some of the things that you've been able to overcome. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of one of the principles that I sort of learned, like I've I've always done community building throughout my life. You know. Right. like type of associations or you know uh, physical activity related things like hiking and soccer and whatever uh to you know the current professional community that we have and one thing that i learned very very recently even though i've been doing it for a, a long time mm. is that you have to be super consistent with your community and until you get to a point where these community members can interact with each other and build together it's not really a community it's at best you know an audience um so th that that's something that we really have to figure out how to do you know definitely we have to go through many iterations of figuring out how to build with the community how to engage with them how to keep them engaged on an ongoing basis uh but honestly the 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 technical side and you know to some extent the human sides of what we've been doing have been the easier parts for me you know being a technical person by by sure. training uh, but the business side has been challenging and you know, obviously uh, not being very, very well versed in that area and had, had to essentially, one of my advisors was at some point I was complaining to my advisor saying, I wish I had an MBA. And she was hmm. like, you practically already have done an MBA given right. all of the things you want. So you had to really you know, teach myself all of the, those ways of thinking and tools and things like that. Uh, and the business model and what we are doing is not trivial. So, you know, uh, we have similar tools out there, like the search engines, like Google that we use that have to monetize through advertisement. And, um, and that creates a lot of problems, a lot of competition. Like, am I actually delivering value to the person who's searching information or am I delivering value to the person who's selling ads? Right. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so there, there are a lot of nuances when you're trying to monetize a system like what we are building system that you know helps people access information so we had to iterate a lot and figure out what works in that space uh and you know this is not an ex this is not a cheap endeavor like it requires a lot of money first i thought you know we're going to bootstrap this you know we're going to figure it out we have a community 
but ultimately we learned that we needed a lot of capital. Um, and, you know, figuring out all of these aspects have been very, very interesting and uh, instructive over the years. Yeah, no, I can I can only imagine and it, to to skillfully navigate all of all of those things. Obviously, you're you know you you have your core strength of expertise, and and then knowing what you don't know, knowing what you should learn, what what you should what you should give to uh, to to other experts and bring in bring in that expertise to your to your team. But but to your point, as you're building and building, it's not cheap. So you must have picked up some of those tools in navigating the the VC world. And uh, you know, it's 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 a space that I, I've been I've been a mentor to to startups here in 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 Toronto, uh, and you see that challenge of navigating those realistic uh, expectations uh, and and level setting a little bit with VCs. How how have you found that as as it, as I imagine now as part of your job as a as a founder? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, I have to give the disclaimer that we have not yet raised money from. Sure major VCs. So everything that I'm telling you is, you know, how, however much I understand from that process so far. So one of the things that was very, a very, very significant transformation for me over the past years, and I admit I'm still in the process of learning it, is going from that thinking that VCs and investors are, you know, counterparts that you have to convince to come along with you to mm. thinking that they are actually partners that you're going on a journey together. And that's mm. a very, very significant nuance because in one scenario, it was very transactional for me. It was like, oh, this yeah. is a template that based on this, I have to tell my story very transactionally. They're going to look at it and say, nah, or yeah, sure. sure. You know, versus <laughs> now that when I'm thinking about them as think about investors as, as potential partners, it becomes a dating process. It becomes a course, process, right? Yep. It becomes a process where I have to tell a story about the growth that I'm imagining for this business, mm -hmm. how that growth is possible, how that growth is differentiated from other alternatives and how the investors and myself, you know, and us as a team, as a company are going to grow together and, you know, right. what benefit we give each other. So the conversation becomes a lot more interesting that way because First of all, you immediately uh, can disqualify a lot of investors that otherwise uh, would not have been great partners for you. Definitely. Because the, the way they, they try to do, the way they articulate their thesis, like all of those are important things because if you get married to this person, to this company, this is going to be a marriage for several years. Right, right. So, no, I, I love that analogy. I totally agree. Yeah, and, and you know, Again, like I'm still in the process of learning what that really means, but I think that transformation that needed to happen mentally for me, uh, you know, has started. I'm still learning it. I'm still learning the roles and techniques. It's ultimately a numbers game to a large extent because there are, especially in very early stages where there are not, you know, significant business metrics to to uh, you know, talk about and you know, bank on. Um, so th that process needs to, you, you have to learn the structure of the system of the playbook of how you essentially create these meaningful relationships that involve, you know, feeding capital to your company and going forward. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And not, not just necessarily jumping at the, the, the at the first large wallet. I, I, I can't agree more with the analogy that the, the dating analogy, I mean, that ties into so many things in this, in this space, but to, to really uh, think about whether or not this is going to be a good relationship, a good partnership. You're entering into that marriage, um, and then confidence as well. Uh, you you it ties into a good relationship as well. You should be confident in your abilities and what you're bringing to the table, and then allowing, uh, you know, sharing that with an individual, and then ideally them having confidence in you as well and confidence in their abilities to be a good partner. It just it's 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 a it's an elegant dance that I know some some young founders may. May just jump at the first, uh, you know, the first opportunity to kind of expand and 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 grow and kind of get past that bootstrapping stage. But I I I I love I love that analogy. Now, it seems as though this, you know, with with this high level expertise you have in your field, there's so much that you've had to learn in terms of things that you that you weren't an expert in, and, and specifically on 
on the on the business side what were some of the ways that you continue to kind of build that you said it's it's so funny to me that you know you you wish to have gotten an mba but someone that was close to you recognized you know and i think you've got quite a bit of that ability already <laughs> what were some of the ways that you were able to get that that uh that experience and kind of get that street mba or that that i don't know what the term would be but something in which you didn't necessarily have to go to I'm yet another class i'm gonna add a street mba to my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I mean, you're my you're my you're my model for that but that's exactly what it is you do have the same level of expertise but where did that come from how did you how did you achieve that without having to get another yet yet another degree <laughs> on your on your cv um so i i'm i like to think that i'm a very pragmatic person um uh, <laughs> and you know the i i admit not everybody is in a position that i was but you know, I was in a position that I practically saved money for a few years mm. to be able to sustain myself because I knew it was not going to be an easy journey. Right. Uh, so I knew that I needed time to figure things out. Um, but ultimately, you know, that sort of, I'm not a very good planner, but, you know, that planning, the practical <laughs> planning really sure. helped me to do a lot of trial and error. So to essentially try things, see why they don't work and learn why they didn't work and adapt and move forward. So, uh, definitely access to, you know, very good mentors. You know, I, I didn't really have had anybody who has mentored me continuously, but you know, any opportunity that I had to interact with somebody who knew, uh, what I was talking about, I tried to convince them to stick around for a while so that I can ask questions. Uh, you know, sometimes I felt, well, accounting is an important aspect. I know nothing about it. I know how to work with numbers, but I don't know how to do accounting, you know, take a course about it. So sort of like just to start doing it, like the, the famous cliche setting is jump and build the plane as you're falling down. Right. Yeah. So then that's exactly what happened here that, you know, I started doing it. I went until I was like, wait, I don't know what to do now. And, you know, mm -hmm. asked around, asked other founders, as mentors and advisors. And, you know, again, having a community is so valuable here because yeah. the result was the answer. You know, like I've been part of some founder communities uh, like A-List. I've been part mm -hmm. of uh, you know, advisory groups like Mars Discovery District, et cetera, and now Creative Destruction Lab. Like wow. having access to people who have done it uh, and you can go to them and say, I can't wrap my head around this. How do you think about it? Lovely. And then just open-minded and go out and ask has been a great way to learn. And one of the important things I think that I learned about myself, because a lot of people along the way have been telling me, oh, when you pitch, you don't sound confident, right? Yeah. Uh, especially when you talk about the business side. And I really challenged myself last year. I said, when I'm talking about technical sides, I'm very confident. So how come... Yeah. I don't sound confident when I'm talking about the other aspect. And what I really learned about myself was that I can't sound confident if I'm not internally confident. And that yeah. was a really huge motivation for me to just really learn the business side and right. be able to talk about it like I know what I'm talking about because, well, actually, I knew what I was talking about at that point. So right. you know, really building that confidence comes with really knowing what is going on. Yeah, no, that that's that's really interesting because I think I I think you're making me recognize that I've had a similar realization in 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 a, in a relatively short amount of time in which um, you know I can put on the game show host and I can I can I can do what I need to do and 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 present and and definitely if I'm if it's a subject that I can talk about all day then I'm I'm in a good spot but if it's a subject that I'm not uh, an expert in I I have to really deep dive in if it's we're going to dive into the finance then let me look at the underlying calculation don't give me the big numbers how did you get there let me i'm a data guy as well to a degree um and i do like going in line by line and figuring that out and i found the anxiety dropped off dramatically when did, not only did i understand that single slide that i was presenting that if anything came up to slice and dice it in the 15 ways that are, i'm probably going to get sliced and diced because I helped build the final result, or at least understood how it was built, then I'd be in a good good position to uh, to uh, to be comfortable. Uh, and that's it's it's fine. I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's a slide. I'll I'll get it. And then and then the anxiety kicked in. I'm like, wait, why am I not? 
why is this so hard? The other things are easier. I get that, you know, it's not my 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 uh, my expertise, but it's that it's that work that you put in to understand all those other areas. I I you know I, I adore that. But it's but it is comforting to know that someone with your pedigree would also maybe be a little uncomfortable uh up there while they're while they're presenting something. So it's not just um it's not just the rest of us. Um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I love this. I, I, I could take, I, I absolutely could take tons of notes and create an entire deck in terms of more advice to give to aspiring founders. But is there anything else that you would, you know, you know, let me ask this better. What would, what advice would you give to Amir from 10 years ago, five years ago, current, current Amir, past Amir? I always, I always do that to myself in which I thank, yeah. I thank past, past Omer for giving for doing something good for a current Homer and also cur and cursing past over for screwing current Homer because he didn't do the But uh, what advice would you give to yourself prior to this journey? Yeah. Um, honestly, I always struggle with that question because, uh, you know, g going back most probably, I think to some extent that question assumes you know, the ability of my past self to make different decisions along the way. But in a lot sure. of the cases, the, that privilege of making different decisions doesn't exist. And, you know, that that's something that I mm. acknowledge. Uh, but one thing that I learned, you know, I, I, you know, change it a little. Like if somebody comes to me and says, okay, I'm starting this journey, you know, what, what should I think about differently? Uh, mm. I, I would say, you know, the, the importance of, system thinking in like literally everything you do. So if you're designing a product, you know, the, the most superficial layer is, oh, what color should these buttons be? The right. next layer, is, how is the user going to go from this point to the next point to the next point? The most abstract and important layer is the system thinking is like, okay, what are all the components that the user has to take into account when they get here? which of these are necessary to help them achieve the next step, et cetera, et cetera. That's the same when it comes to investment pitching. You know, when I pitched the investors initially, mm -hmm. it just, it's slide of the deck was its independent, you know, single thing. But now like the whole thing is a story. It's all components of a system that come together in a narrative that I'm telling, you know, the investors. So then the sooner you learn that the, the sooner you acknowledge that that's what needs to happen and have learned how to actually do it in different contexts, the easier your journey will be. Oh, wow. That's lovely. And, and very, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's, it is applicable regardless of the kind of the subject, whatever you're, if it's a problem, you're looking to tackle it and solve it and get to something, uh, you know, get, get to some finish line. That line of thinking will translate regardless of what you're doing. I, I love that you, you know, putting that in terms of the storytelling on a deck. Uh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that that would have applied, but it applies elegantly to uh, to that to that process. That that uh, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, giving you a different way to look at it. I, I enjoy the structure. I'm be I'm very much one of those individuals that if I've got a, a giant mess of problems, I just need to organize it. It always looks it always looks like less of a of a mountain to climb if it's just organized and, and, and systematized as, uh, as, as you said it, that, that, I think that's, that's wonderful advice. I imagine it's, uh, it's been, been a busy couple of years. It's probably going to, I imagine 2023 is looking to be incredibly busy as well. And, and interesting, anything you can tell us about what's, what's coming for, for aggregate intellect, for yourself, what's, what's on deck? What's, what do you got planned for 2023? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll throw out three things. So one is, you know, I, I run these uh, small sub community of founders and machine learning people and investors. Uh, we meet almost every week in Toronto. Uh, oh, wow. We go out and bike or, you know, sit somewhere and eat or do some other activity together. It's a very good way to get to know other people That's who are you know, builders, operators, investors in the space. Uh, so if you're interested, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, et cetera. So that's one thing. The second thing is, um, we are starting to take on pilot clients. So if you are a team that is working on any sort of data science related problem, that's interested in, you know, an agent that, you know, sort of 
act as your expert engineer in the team, you know, reach out and we can talk about it. We'll put out more information about it on social media. So again, follow me on LinkedIn and such. Yeah, uh, absolutely. To- we'll make sure we link to, uh, to your LinkedIn, to your Twitter. Absolutely. Definitely. And the third thing is, you know, if you're fundraising, so if you're an angel investor interested in a space of AI in general, uh, I know generative AI is a buzzword these days. This is what <laughs> we've been looking for a while. You know, we are not the ones that just heard about it a month ago. So definitely uh, <laughs> would be excited to show you what we're doing. Wow. That is, yeah, that, that is going to be, uh, that's a lot to, to have going on right now, but also seems like par for the course for you and your team. Uh, always, always a lot kind of happening, uh, and, uh, uh, really excited to follow your progress. Uh, again with Christine, I can't thank her enough for making the connection because now I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go a little super nerd and make sure I pay attention to what's happening with the community and, and with, uh, agri and intellect in, in, in particular, and, and make sure to keep up with your YouTube channel and, 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 uh, and, uh, all of your socials. So. Amir, I've taken up uh, uh, enough of your time today. Really appreciate the conversation. Like I said, I've been I've been uh, uh, very excited to, to to have this conversation, and I know you've been really busy, so I can't thank you enough. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, it was a fun conversation. All right, appreciate your time. <laughs>